four main reasons uh, that I like to buzz the mouthpiece, to play the mouthpiece, and also um, why I teach it. Um, one is it allows artistry and style to develop without the, the barriers of the, 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 the slide technique or the valve, the valve, valve technique. It's an instrument, and so you don't have to be worried about the, about the coordination of the valves or the slide um, with, with the buzzing. Um, it develops a stronger, buzzing develops a stronger connection between the, the ear, you know, the, the sound you have in your mind, the, the pitch in the mind, uh, and the, the embouchure, the lips. So it's, it's connecting the conceptual with, with reality. Um, uh, it develops a more resonant tone, buzzing does, um, as you uh, thicken up the air column and you get more lip surface, uh, lateral lip surface uh, vibrating inside the cup of the mouthpiece, you'll find that you'll develop a more resonant sound. It'll be easier, so you get a better sound for less effort. Um, and then also the tactile response, it allows you to uh, actually make improvements on the instrument uh, because you, you're using uh, the mouthpiece. So when we pick up our instruments, uh, there's a whole bunch of neural pathways that light up in the brain that represent um, all the good things and all the less good things that we do uh, on the instrument. And so uh, this happens whenever we pick up, the, pick up our instrument. Uh, but when we pick up the mouthpiece, those same sets of, of uh, neural pathways don't light up or don't get as strong in the brain. And so this allows for uh, uh, new things to happen that you can do on the, on the mouthpiece. And then through the, through the use of repetition and imagination, you can take them to the instrument and you can achieve improvement on the instrument uh, by more or less going around the existing uh, things that you don't like as well about your playing. You can, you can implement new things. Uh, that you want to do uh, in your plane. And you can do that because uh, the tactile response on the mouthpiece is not the same as, uh, as it is with the instrument. One of the, one of the objections that I often hear to playing the mouthpiece, to uh, mouthpiece buzzing is, it's not exactly um, like playing the, playing the instrument. And this is very true. And um, usually that objection is part of a conversation about something to do with, the, you know, with Arnold Jacobs and his teaching. And, and Arnold Jacobs um, didn't actually say that it was buzzing mouthpiece was exactly like uh, playing the instrument. Uh, he said it was close enough uh, to playing the instrument that there was pedagogical value, that there was value in improvement. You could actually get something that would... Uh, out of playing the mouthpiece that you could then uh, take to the instrument and you would you would get some improvement um, on the on the instrument so it's it's uh, definitely not exactly like playing the instrument buzzing the mouthpiece is not um, uh, but it's close enough that there's some there's some value uh, to it um, in terms of incorporating um, the mouthpiece playing into the routine what I generally do uh, is just play two or three minutes on the mouthpiece uh, before I start uh, practicing the tuba. And then I'll interject um, uh, buzzing phrases. Uh, if I'm having a, a difficult time, uh, you know, with, with the, the, uh, just getting the right pitches to be real precise, then I'll, I'll practice uh, buzzing um, on, the, uh, on the mouthpiece to, to really hone in, hone in the, the pitch. Um, I will do this, interject it throughout a, throughout a practice session. Um, and if there is, it's, if it's been a particularly hard um, day, maybe, like maybe a Bruckner symphony or um, a long week with a Mahler symphony or something, um, uh, I might play uh, some, some low notes on the, on the mouthpiece, but generally I'll reserve the warm down to uh, really to just the, just the instrument itself, middle and low register, long notes, long tones on the instrument for a warm down. I don't do too much warm down on the, on the mouthpiece. Uh, in terms of just uh, buzzing um, before I practice, it's always with uh, with um, melodies. Um, I don't I don't buzz in uh, drill forms. So, for example, I don't do. I don't do that. Um, in the the book, the Hal Leonard Advanced Band Method book, uh, with special studies by Arnold Jacobs for the tuba. He, he, he wrote that in the early 60s, and he actually did have 
um, mouthpiece drills. Um, by the time I saw him, uh, started studying with him in 1981, he had really moved away from mouthpiece drill recommendations uh, in, in favor of, of melodies, of just tunes. And um, I think the reason for that is because he wanted to, he probably saw how um, the students, when he taught mouthpiece playing as a drill form activity, he um, saw a disconnect between the, uh, the technical side of the musician's mind and the more musical artistic side of the musician's mind. And he really wanted, he wanted there to be music all the time. Uh, a lot of times people think of Arnold Jacobs as the breathing guy, but really he was the music guy. And uh, so many times people came to his studio who were all, they were all um, really tight uh, through poor respiratory, respiration habits, poor breathing habits that just made them all tight. So he would work on that, but it was all always in the service of or in, with the goal of becoming a better artist, being able to express one's artistry more easily. So I just, uh, I just buzz, buzz tunes. <laughs> I'm just buzzing melodies on the on the mouthpiece and it's usually just whatever comes to mind uh, that that morning or that day whenever it is there's nothing there's no real order or anything like that um, I try to make them uh, usually I try to slur when I'm buzzing because I do a lot of articulating on the tuba already uh, so articulating practice uh, articulating repetition is already being covered on a regular basis and so I try to uh, try to focus on getting uh, getting uh, air to the lips uh, via the slur and uh, um, that's that can be a really helpful thing just for the for the overall tone and and um, the resonance the resonance of the sound um, I, in terms of like other kinds of practicing like do I buzz my concertos or solos I can definitely um, I'll, I'll be buzzing them when I practicing practicing them with the instrument I'll take phrases and I'll, 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 I'll um, buzz them on the mouthpiece to get them a little bit more lively, but more resonant, uh, a little more accurate um, in the pitches and the articulations and, and those sorts of things. Um, in terms of uh, like the, the, the length of, of playing the mouthpiece, um, th there, there really is, is if, you're doing it, uh, if you're doing it well and just easily, uh, there, was, there really isn't uh, a time limit, time limit any more than you would on the, on, on the instrument. So maybe I'm not going to probably play the mouthpiece for more than a half an hour at a time, but it's usually like three, four, five minutes. But if I'm doing something like that, it's just sort of a mezzo forte dynamic, lots of air, um, it's easy. I'm not going to hurt myself by doing that. It's those situations where um, maybe you're doing on the mouthpiece what would be considered on the instrument like fortissimo. Uh, that would definitely cause damage uh, on the mouthpiece by doing it on the mouthpiece just as it would cause damage uh, by doing lots you know uh, you know a long time on the instrument if uh, in that volume uh, you know without a break so um, really what you can do on the mouthpiece is pretty much what you can do on the tuba and what you can do on the tuba is pretty much what you can do on the mouthpiece um, the idea is to keep it to keep it easy resonant flowing with air um, um, really uh, attentive to just resonance and, uh, and, and being communicative from, from an artistic standpoint. Everything you do on the instrument, uh, you, you want to try and, and do um, on the mouthpiece. The, the, the mouthpiece really is an instrument. And something that, um, that Jacobs um, taught was to, you know, play concerts on the mouthpiece. Not literal walk out of a Carnegie Hall stage, play concerts, but you know, with your friends and everything, you can, you can just play for each other on the mouthpiece. And in this way, you're always putting your mind on what is artistically important. You're focusing your thoughts on the art, the artistry, and just realize that um, you, what you, the, the art that, that uh, is coming out of the instrument bell, really it starts, well, it starts in the mind, and then it comes down the seventh cranial nerve to the lip region and it enters into the mouthpiece cup. And then once it's in the mouthpiece cup, it's history and it's all acoustics after that. 
Uh, so really, um, really strive to be an artist on the mouthpiece and you will see an explosion in artistic quality on the instrument. Now, is buzzing for everyone? You know, I uh, uh, interviewed around 140 students of Mr. Jacobs for the Tube of People TV project um, that you can find on YouTube. And not everybody uh, said that he had them buzz their mouthpiece. It wasn't a uniform thing. Most people did because there was some, some common issues amongst those people, those students. But not everybody um, uh, expressed the, uh, Mr. Jacobs recommending that they need to buzz their mouthpiece. Um, uh, so if, if this was all functioning well and, and it was uh, you know, really resonant here and you were getting a great sound already, then he didn't necessarily uh, recommend that you needed to do that. Uh, it was something you can do and it wouldn't hurt you if you did, um, but it was, it was not like you have to do this or you're gonna, you, you won't be good. Some people came to him already playing very well, and they, they did not buzz their mouthpieces for him. They were not asked to buzz their mouthpiece for him at all. So um, it certainly is potentially for everybody, but it's not a requirement. And uh, as, as I can tell you that I was, when I first went to Jacobs in 1981, I did not play the mouthpiece at all. I found it very difficult. It was extremely uh, dis dissatisfying. It was hard. I didn't sound good. Uh, it took a lot of air. It was just not good. And so uh, he, uh, in those initial lessons, recommended that I play the mouthpiece. Um, I resisted that. He was very kind and, and um, uh, in his, patient in his persuasion. And uh, you know, a few months later, I did start to buzz the mouthpiece. Uh, and man, the, the improvement trajectory really took off. Uh, so that, that was for me something that, uh, showed me that this really is something that's great. And then when I started teaching and I would recommend the same thing to my students in those early years of my teaching, it was like, wow, this really is a thing. It really does work. It's not, it wasn't just me. It's like a thing. It's a human thing. And uh, so that's, uh, that, that, that was a really uh, uh, informative time of, of my life in terms of mouthpiece playing as being really, uh, really quite helpful. Sometimes I'm asked, what's, uh, what's the difference between buzzing and singing? And um, really, they're very related because the part of the brain where uh, the singer is conceiving of pitch and timbre uh, is the same part of the brain where we as brass players uh, can conceive of those things as well. It's just the differences with the singer uh, that that information goes from that part of the brain down the laryngeal nerve to the larynx. But with the brass player, that information goes down the seventh cranial nerve to the lip region. Uh, but they start in the, the same place in the mind. So really, um, the in my early lessons with Jacobs, uh, there was there was sort of an order. If I was having trouble with a phrase, he would he would stop. Can you buzz that phrase? Okay, I would try to buzz it. And as I mentioned before, I was not a very good buzzer initially and I was resistant to it. So my buzzing wasn't very good. And then if I couldn't buzz it, then he would say, can you sing it? And so he had a little keyboard in the studio and he generates some pitches and, and then we work on singing. And so once I was able to then sing it, then we would take it back to the mouthpiece and then we would take it back to the horn. And uh, this, this progression um, was always very successful and it's something that, uh, that uh, I, I teach my students and have been teaching my students for decades. Um, in terms of like, you know, te you know students and, and young, young folks, um, just playing the mouthpiece is, is something, it's, it's just so, it's uh, such an easy way, as I mentioned before, it's an easy way to really learn how to express yourself artistically and start to think in artistic ways. Um, not you're not a tuba player or a trumpet player or a trombone player. You are an artist who happens to express themselves through the trumpet, through the tuba, through the trombone, through the horn, and through the euphonium. And so, um, the the uh, the benefit of of just learning how to how to uh, be comfortable singing on the mouthpiece, playing the mouthpiece, is uh, is such a great thing. And then all the all the items that i mentioned before with the increased sound you know the the the, the thicker or a more lateral amount of lip surface bright, vibrating in the cup of the mouthpiece as it relates to the the relative thickness of the airflow 
that is coming to the embouchure is a is a really great thing to develop on the on the instrument. And something that you that you really want to keep in mind is there's there's buzzing tone and then there's buzzing tone. And I I really encourage my students to become a connoisseur of buzzing tone, just like a sommelier, a wine a wine expert is uh, is really. Uh, uh, sees a, a glass of red wine and knows that there's more than just one type of red wine. There's so many varieties of red wine. And that's the case with, with mouthpiece buzzing. So uh, just to go... Okay, that's a buzz. But what happens if we make that a bigger sound? So you can imagine that that sound going into the instrument is then just being amplified by the instrument. So if you send in a really small, tiny sound, yeah, it's going to come out the other end of the instrument, out the bell, bigger. But if you send in that second way of buzzing, that sound is going to be much wider, much more massive, much more resonant. And uh, so that's why it's important to really understand that there are, there are different qualities, uh, there are different... Um, um, types of sound that we make on the mouth on the mouthpiece, and you want to be you really want to be um, attuned to that, and not just go for whatever sound happens to come out of the mouthpiece. Really become a connoisseur of the sounds that you're making on the mouthpiece, and it, just as you do on on your instrument. So it's a it's a it's a really it's a really great it's a really great to, uh, thing to be focused on. Just being focused on sound. And in Mr. Jacob's studio, sound was where it was at. Just about everything he did was related to sound. As far as overdoing uh, it on the on the on the mouthpiece, I, I covered this a little bit. But you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna play with too little air, or you're gonna play really loudly a lot, um, uh, or maybe you know above the staff a lot, just like on the instrument, if you do it a lot and you don't balance it out with other types of playing, then yeah, you're gonna you're gonna that can lead to some some issues, and so it's just uh, it's just common sense. It's common sense as, in terms of of what uh, uh, you know how to approach the mouthpiece, just like common sense with how to uh, approach the approach the instrument. So, I hope these uh, few uh, little tidbits of information um, about playing the mouthpiece have been helpful. I really um, uh, I'm always reminded of the the quote uh, that my uh, my. My friend uh, and former uh, college colleague at Northwestern University, Rex Martin, said at, um, I think it was at ITech 2016 in Knoxville, University of Tennessee. Um, it was shortly after there was a, he gave a master class that was shortly after um, uh, Christian Lindbergh had made a, a statement about mouthpiece buzzing. And so there was all a buzz, uh, that topic was. And uh, somebody asked Rex Martin in that class what he thought about mouthpiece playing, mouthpiece buzzing. And he said, and I think this is a really great, a really great response, he said that, that playing the mouthpiece, buzzing the mouthpiece, is kind of like wearing an overcoat uh, in Chicago during the winter. You know, you don't really need to wear a winter coat in Chicago in the winter, but it sure is helpful if you do. And so uh, I agree with that, uh, with that uh, sentiment. And I've been uh, uh, using the, 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 the buzzing uh, and teaching the buzzing uh, for the last 43 years. And uh, it's been, I've seen it help uh, virtually every one of my students, and it certainly has helped me. So, thank you.